Okay, welcome to Learning Target 4, binomial, the binomial distribution. Uh, this is probably one of the more tricky things that we have to do in this course. Um, and so I just wanted to, to preview it with that. Um, it's really, it's, it's real, like, it's not that it's that challenging. I mean, there is a formula that, that you're going to be given, but it's really just to understand the formula. That's probably the hard part. Um, and it also mixes, like, we, we really couldn't do it until now. Like you really needed to know uh, permutations, you needed to know combinations, uh, you need to know all of that stuff, and you'll see really quickly why. Um, we're actually going to like continue on with a with a an example from last lesson, and uh, so I want you to think about like flipping three coins. Um, so we said that like there are different choices for for the number of heads, and so the probability formula. Would actually be would actually have a domain of like x x equals zero heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. Um, maybe know what those probabilities are from last lesson. Uh, in fact, they're like one eight, three eight, three eight, and one eight. Um, but to come up with a formula that will calculate that an algebraic formula, kind of like the uniform distribution one, um, where it's just like one divided by a number. Uh, that's probably the hard part. Um, and so if you want, you can pause it and try and see if you can think of the formula. Um, but we're actually going to work through that. So the learning target is, I know the binomial distribution formula gives me a way to calculate the probability of different outcomes where order matters and there are multiple cases. Uh, so with flipping three coins, um, order matters, like it matters where you get the heads. Um, but it also, like, there are all most multiple cases. Like, there's obviously more than one way to flip two heads, more than one way to flip one head, and so there are multiple cases. It is used when the trials are independent and we are counting the number of successes. This is something we'll focus on more in two lessons from now when we compare the difference between the hypergeometric distribution. I know the expected value can be calculated relatively easily by multiplying the probability of success by the number of trials. So we're actually going to see a second formula with this distribution for the expected value, and that will allow you to calculate the probability a little bit easier. So flipping three coins, like we, we just go through the case of like the different values for x. So the first, well, the first outcome is no heads. Uh, and if you have no heads, the probability of getting no heads is one half times one half times one half. And so what these probabilities are, so it's it's one tail happening and another tail happening and another tail happening. So it's a half times a half times a half. Probability getting one head would be uh, one half times one half times one half, but this time it's a little different. It's uh, a head happening and then a tail and then a tail. Um, and so what happens here is like, this is actually just one case. Um, this is the one case where a head happens first, but I ask you what what are the other cases? Like, how many cases are there? Um, where else could the head happen? And so actually we say that there's three cases, and rather than just multiply by three, we actually multiply by three choose one. Three choose one is the number of cases. It is actually three, but it, we're just saying out of the three slots, we're going to choose one of them. This just becomes interesting because right now we're at, we start to actually mix uh, permutations or the slot method with um, combinations. Uh, so or we, we start to mix order mattering, but then to count the cases, we use combinations. So this number actually just counts the cases, but it uses combinations. Uh, so we get three eights. Probably getting two heads would be a half times a half times a half, but in this time, you have head, head, tail. And then how many cases do you have? You can imagine, well, there's again, there's three cases, but that's found a little bit differently. It's found by three choose two, which is, we say, like, is the number of cases out of uh, three slots, we're going to choose two of them. And the probability three heads, uh, the probability three is, is a head times a head times a head, a half times a half times a half, which is actually one eighth. So this actually starts to get us the the algebraic formula for um, 
for flipping three coins and, and how many heads you're going to get. One thing that does help this is actually like adding on numbers that uh, we don't actually have to write. But instead of one half times one half times one half, we're taking no heads. We're, the number of cases we're actually going to get is one case. Um, out of the three choice cho three choices, the three slots, we're going to choose none of them. So that's the one case. And then in the bottom, we actually say out of the three slots, we're going to choose three of them for heads to happen. So again, three choose three is actually one as well. And so it's one case. Um, and so your probability formula is three choose x, or sorry, three choose x, a half time to the x, and a half to the three minus x. Um, in this case, it's really just a half to the three. But um, what we just recognize is we're just separating the halves that are heads and the halves that are tails. The three minus x represents the remainder after, like, say we have one head, then we're going to have two tails. And so it just says that, that there's always going to be three fractions multiplied together. And the cases, the three choose x is the number of cases. Indeed, the first homework question asks you, what what role does, the, does that part of the formula play? And this just tells you the number of cases. Uh, so out of the three slots, we're going to choose x of them. Uh, it's important to kind of look at another example because the half and the half are the exact same thing. It's, it really just the probability of heads is the same as the probability of tails. So it's important to look at another example. So as expected, number six is if we roll a die three times. If we roll a die three times, we can say that we're going to get zero sixes, one six, two six, or three sixes. And the probabilities are, are very similar to the, the coin flip. Um, the first if, if we get zero sixes, the probability that we don't get a six is actually five sixes. So we get five six times five six times five six. So those are the three coins. Times three choose zero. So the three slots, we're going to choose none of them to be a six. And so we get this like five six to the three times three choose zero. Um, three choose zero is the one case out of the three slots, we're going to choose none of them. The probability getting one six, we actually say, okay, well, let's put the one si the the sixes in in the first slot. The probability get coming up in the first slot is one six, and then the other two are not sixes, so they're five six times five six, and then out of the three slots, we're gonna there's there's gonna be three cases because we're gonna choose one of them. So three choose one, very similar to the coin flip. The next one we've got two sixes, so the first two cases, the first two slots will say come up six, but that's only one case out of the three slots we're going to choose two, and so we're actually going to have three cases. And the last one is going to be one six times one six times one six. That's when you have three sixes come up, and out of the three slots we're going to choose all three of them, so there's one case. And so this here really represents the the formula for um, the the number of sixes that come out. So a formula that we actually get is uh, probability of x is three choose x. So three is the number of times we're going to roll the dice. X is going to be the number of heads that come up. One sixth is the so that's the cases. Um, one sixth to the x that's the number of times we're going to get heads. Five sixes to the remainder is the number of times we're going to get. I keep saying heads. One six is the number of times we're going to get sixes. Five sixes is the remainder, and that's going to be the number of times we get not six. Multiplying x times p of x, we get zero. We get 0 0.34722. You probably should want to try that on your own, make sure that you can calculate that. Two times. Um, the probability is 0.13889, and then three times the probability is 0 0.01389. If you need help calculating that, honestly, the way I would do it is is look at it as fractions. Uh, three choose one is three. Uh, five squared is 25. On the top, I'm going to get 75, and on the bottom, I'm going to get three sixes. Six times six times six, which is 216. This guy calculates to 75 over 216, 
This one, 3 times 5, which is 15 over 216. And this one is 1 times 1, which is 1 out of 216. If we add up that column to get the expected value, we get 0 0.5. And we actually wonder, like, that's a really straightforward number. So the question is, what would you expect to happen? Like, how many, how many sixes do you expect to get if you roll the dice three times? How many sixes would you expect to get if you roll the dice six times? You get one. So if you roll the dice half that, you're going to get half. Does the, the answer make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But in fact, there's actually an easier way. And so the formula that we get are is there's two formulas. The first one is the the combination form or the the binomial formula, which we've already started to see. Um, the probability of success times the probability of failure, but like the certain number of successes that you want to happen times the certain number of failures that you want to happen. The n minus x is just the remainder, and n. Um, it's probably better to say total number of uh, trials, uh, but it is the total number of outcomes that you're going to get. Um, it, it is actually probably better to say total number of trials there. The expected value is, is very simple. It's just the number of trials that you're going to take times the probability of success. Uh, so one six times three trials, three flips of the coin, we're going to get 0.5. So that's the formula that you're going to be given. That's the formula we use. A factory producing electronic components knows that 0.8% will be defective. Uh, in a shipment of 150 components, what is the formula for the probability distribution? Um, the distribution would just look like this. 150 choose X. The probability, that's percent, so we still have to divide it by 100. So 0 0.008 to the x, the number that we are, like, the number that of um, the probability, we say we want to find that 2 are defective, we plug in 2. Uh, 0.992 comes up 138 times. And so that's your distribution formula. So you can find out the probability that less than 5 are defective by subbing in 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. What is the expected number of defective products? It's probably one of the easier things we have to do in this unit. We just have to find out what's 0.8% of 150. That's 1.2 expected. And then we're going to display the entire distribution in a spreadsheet. So click on the spreadsheet and see what happens. Um, and this is what we'd expect you to do in the in the game sphere, to make a spreadsheet, not to do it by hand. Um, so we actually put the combination formula in here. Excel has this little formula called com Combin, it's a combination. 150 choose the first column, which is 0, uh, times 0 0.008 to the exponent 0. So that means um, all of them are going to be good, good, not defective. So 0.008% uh, so to the 0, 0.992 to the, to the remainder, 150 minus A2, uh, which is 0. And as we go down, you can see like A3, the, the exponents really change. Um, and the number changes. So like that, that's actually your binomial formula. So you can check that out. And actually what happens is you see that even though we do this 150 times, um, so at a certain point, like really because it's only 0.8% defective, it really rounds to zero. Excel does its best to give you numbers, but then at a certain point it just rounds to zero. I wonder if I pull this over, it'll... Give me a little bit further. Now Excel just says, okay, I'm done giving you zeros. So this just rounds to zero. It becomes interesting, like the probability that two or less, you can see um, you, if you add these three up, you get the probability that two or less. So you can see almost like uh, um, 80, like, eight, like high, high 80% percent effect, like chance of getting two or less, um, which is, which I mean, does tell you a lot. And so if you're going into business, like this is a, a good model to show that, like, to show how many are actually going to be defective. Because we know 0 0.008, but we know there's a chance that one isn't defective. Like there's a 30% chance that none are defective. Um, I mean, even in a bad batch, like there's only a 9% chance that three are defective. You can add up everything here. And so you can say that the probability that three or more are defective is like, the sum of um, the sum of these columns here, 
And so the probability that three or more are defective is, is only 12%. Um, so you, and you can, you're able to do that now. Um, when we start talking about the binomial distribution, we start looking at like the need to use spreadsheets because we don't want to calculate these things by hand. We've done our tables so far. We did one in this lesson. We did them by hand, but at a certain point, we don't want to do these tables by hand. Uh, we want to do them uh, with a spreadsheet. Okay, so there's your practice for today. Um, as I said, R1 really just talks about what is the role of that one part of the formula. Um, so make sure you take your time. It's really important to practice through these.